My name is Mark Anthony, everybody calls me M.A. I call myself a professional artist because I've gotten a government check. So, you know, at the end of the day, um, I think we're all artists. We all live, somehow we're all creative. I mean, it's part of our, like, human nature. Um, and so, uh, I always, I was always impressed by art because somebody cared about me at that time when I was painting and thought I could go, you know, uh, some distance. I didn't think about it, I kind of stopped. And then when I started my full-time business, it allowed me to come back to it and become an artist um, on a bigger scale. Uh, then after that, I was like, well, I'm going through all these difficulties. How can I be the middleman for the next up-and-coming artist that don't have to take all these falls, trips, or fails, and it kind of helps them? Um, because the one thing a lot of artists don't understand that it is a business. And so starting artists is because they didn't think of it as, as a business. So um, Ben Rock came out uh, of that and ultimately uh, my partners are Zoltan, Jared, and Kyle. Um, I'm the artist. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to be doing a lot of talking anyway because this is our first tutorial. But uh, we'll start with Zoltan. I mean, I'm Zoltan. I have a for bad job. <laughs> right. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Nice Come on, give us a little bit more. I'm a hair stylist. There you I'm go. working in a hair salon too. One of the best in the area. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, so, my name is Kyle Sasser. I do a bunch of different things real estate, uh, podcasts, as I said. But what I bring to Bedrock is business acumen, processes, marketing, automation, just to make everything run very smoothly. I'm going to stay behind the camera, but I'm Jared Brown. I'm a, I'm a cinematographer. I work at USF full-time, um, running a production team there, do a lot of their marketing and educational videos, and I freelance anything from real estate to weddings to you name it. If somebody pays me for it, I'll do it. Um, and drew, lots of drone and aerial footage. Um, and now I joined up with these guys, just like I think most people, because Zoltan is my hairstylist. Um, so, kind of brought us all together. Now here we are. I'm Annie. Um, I work with Zotan. I'm a hairstylist too. I'm from Kansas City. And um, we were just talking about it. And I love doing art too. So I thought I'd join. Yeah. Um, my name is Kristen. I live from the, well, I live in the Tampa area now. I do visual art, um, painting, drawings, fine art, uh, portraits. And I was just telling him that I also volunteer with four different nonprofits. And we're doing vegan events that are coming up. There's um, different veg fests and the health fests in St. Pete. So, yeah. so obviously this is our first meeting, so congratulations. You're attending okay. the first right. <laughs> front meeting. Thank you. Yes, um, MA, I'm just going to go so you can kind of get set up. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Uh, so basically what our goal is, we are looking to build a art community here in Tampa. It's one thing that's... Should I put the beard out? <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> So we're in our community, none of it. <laughs> so well, I don't know. I'm used to real estate, which you know, a lot of drinking going on over there too. So Tampa, we have a lot of great artists here, but there's not a place where everyone congregates and interacts and exchanges information, ideas, and techniques. I'm not an artist, obviously. Um, my specialty is on online stuff, online marketing, online communities, that sort of stuff. Ma, his expertise is obviously doing the actual art. Zoltan is our connector. Obviously, everyone's here because of him, honestly. And Jared is our uh, uh, media specialist, and also online, he heads up the USF uh, video department, right? Mm -hmm. right. So, <clears throat> basically, what we're, and what we're trying to do, we're trying to build three columns, three pillars in the Tampa Bay art community. We're trying to do live events, which we're currently putting together, which is going to include annual live events, large events. Um, as well as monthly meetings at the local marketplaces, which we do have our applications in the works at some of the local markets. Um, second is our online presence uh, at our website, bedrockart.com. Um, <clears throat> and community, which is bringing artists together. Primarily our focus is to bring artists together, exchange ideas, and honestly to sell artwork. <laughs> and to help promote local artists and to build that community. 
Um, obviously, we need help and assistance with that because you know it takes a community to do it. Um, so we are very open to feedback and ideas and and all that sort of stuff because we have ideas, but we're only four dudes, you know, and especially y'all are the first, you know, females. Yes. <laughs> so that, like that no perspective is very, yeah. you know, right. like we don't have that perspective. Right, that's so, true. So we are working on putting on like annual events and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to do one themed show um, annually and then we're going to do like a show, what is it called, show up and throw up? Show up and throw up, yeah. you know, pop ups and stuff like that to give um, artists, you know, different um, platforms of shows. You know, the, you know, an annual show is going to be more of like an upper scale type of stage, so the situation of those people that come, uh, and then a pop-up show is kind of like, you know, boom, uh, stuff like that. So yeah, so just give different platforms. So, so we have our shows, um, <clears throat> and we're kind of still working out the details on how all that's going to work, but basically we have two, two tiers of things currently. We have um, basically artists on our website is basically going to be more open to, to the public so far as artists goes. We really want to create a platform where artists can come and put the artwork up. We take the smallest percentage just for the audience and to facilitate the sale. Um, and then we also have um, like a featured artist which is you know reviewed and approved by Bedrock because you know if you open it up to the public you get a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of riffraff in there. Um, <clears throat> I forget what the other part of that was. Sorry, this is the first time I've stood up to get on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so we're going to do the fe featured artists, and that's also going to include like our, our online marketing presence. Uh, oh, we also do uh, something called Free Art Friday, which is where an artist creates a small free piece of artwork, and we hide it somewhere around the city, do a little social post just to try to get the people excited. Did you excited the next Friday? Yeah. Yeah, we've done it a few times. Yeah, no, yeah. Um, <laughs> people were it's a little fun. confused. <laughs> and we're still waiting somebody's sign back to find that somebody yep. that's hanging in the living room because yeah. that's the goal for it, right? Because uh -huh. yeah. so, everyone it, loves art, art. Mm -hmm. but most people don't know where to go locally to get yeah. it. So we're right. trying, that's what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. so, so this is the, that third pillar where we're building that community. So mm -hmm. that's kind of what we're about, right? So, yeah. Right. All right. So, I, think, I think it's also <laughs> kind of about what he, tonight we want to help. He wants to help up and coming artists. Whether or not you're an amateur artist or professional artist, he'll show you his tips. We'll try to help you market yourself yeah. and be kind of like a crux that people need to get started. Yeah. Um, so, like, yeah, so yeah. like this month, he's doing an actual hands on artist thing. Like, mm -hmm. next month, the plan is for me to do an actual like business, how to maintain your contacts. Mm -hmm. And because being a real estate agent, like, it's constantly being in contact with people. Mm -hmm. And that translates to any business. Mm -hmm. So, we're going to flip and flop between kind of those two because it's critical. To people eating every month, actually. <laughs> well, it's yeah. Really good. It's, yeah, that's our society, right? So, sound good? Mm -hmm. right. Taking the start in the <laughs> So, without further ado, you ready? Awesome. Right. Okay, so I am going to um, start with uh, some of these are uh, different glazes that I've done. Uh, when I start doing some of these, um, I have an end goal in mind, so you know you might see that I'm done right here because uh, they're just probably for Free Art Friday or like just random gifts because people are always saying, hey, can you give me a piece? And it's like, okay, I was just farting around one night and I just did a random piece. So um, I'll just let you do it. Uh, but then they're all different types, you know, whether it's a board or um, so forth. Uh, and then I did canvas, and so I have this one as a canvas, uh, one where I, I did the uh, glaze on it and not on it. So you can see where it changes uh, the dynamic of it. Um, so it kind of brings out the color, and that's where uh, a subpar painting or just a painting you want to seal, actually it, it just it makes it better. You know, it takes it. It could take a painting from two to ten, mm -hmm. uh, but then it's also will complement a painting that you probably put um, mega time and effort into it. Uh, you know, uh, but it is uh, a, a process that 
like you said, you know, a lot of people, it's just, it's overbearing, they don't know what to do. Um, so you're more than welcome to, you know, fill that, stuff like that. And I'm going to kind of give you uh, a little bit of how, like, I'm a messy artist, per se, but this is uh, a super messy uh, process. Uh, this process is actually not a joke, it is chemicals. Uh, if any of this stuff gets onto uh, anywhere, consider it gone. It's like a, a sap that will archive uh, anything in the world, like 2,460,000 years. You're like, oh, this guy was doing rosin. So um, these are the things needed. Obviously, you want to make sure your, your space is uh, definitely um, have no issues. Um, so tape, tape is used for to kind of puddle. Sometimes you can do either or. Um, so I have two types of styles here. One is the canvas and then one is, is wood. So the canvas, um, I want to kind of create a little puddle on it. So when you put the tape in, it's going to allow it to pull up. And then through the process, you undo it and it'll, it'll take care of itself. I put a board under it because uh, the weight of uh, the resin can kind of drip down and so it becomes a little, un uh, a little uh, uneven. Um, so that's that. And again, I'm doing two different uh, types of, 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 of paints. Like one is, like I said, the wood and one is the canvas. Uh, then we go to the torch. The blow torch uh, is used to get your bubbles out. And so that, you know, you sweep it because once you start doing uh, the chemical in there, you'll end up uh, having to get the bubble out because it's uh, consistently uh, reacting. Level, make sure your table's level, everything's level. Um, and the reason why I said I'll, I'll show you the one that's behind me where I did make sure it was level uh, and it could pull up to one side. It is very self-leveling uh, to an extent. So if you're off a little bit, it'll still kind of, you know, figure itself out. Um, this is obviously the resin. So it comes in a, a B side and an A side. And so both together, nothing's going to happen. But once you put them together, time's on. Um, and so it's one part, one part. So if you're doing one cup, you're doing one cup. Now you have two cups worth of that. How you measure it, always do more than you expect to have for a painting. Always have backup paintings, so that way if you have extra, they get resin. So if you have like a one or two one, you're like, oh, I'll just collect it on the background. So when I'm doing resin, I have other ones that I mean, now you have like six pieces off of one night of resin. Um, gloves, uh, I use the gloves. You need to use the gloves, because this thing is like, no joke, it start burning you after a while. Um, some people do three gloves so they can like pull them off as the process because once you get it on there, it starts getting on your clothes, it may touch your arm. Um, typically I wear long sleeves, I just didn't have one today. Uh, but long sleeves so that just keep yourself covered. Uh, make sure the clothes you wear, those are our clothes, you don't care. Um, and then this is, I use this bucket to measure. Some people uh, will do a measuring cup. Um, I, I do this because I do usually large pours and uh, people will do smaller ones where they use that and then they pour them in cups with acrylic to do acrylic painting pours but I'm just going to just do the resin to get you on a basic level. Um, all right. Uh, I use wax paper. Uh, wax paper will stop it from bleeding through anything so if you have something that where your space is not a great, you know, a garage or something that you can destroy. You want to make sure everything's perfect as much as possible. You can get these products. Uh, you can get the smaller versions at Michaels. Um, wait till you get 50% off because it is kind of expensive. Uh, this right here is a, you know, it's a. There's A, B, and C, and then there's one now that comes out. It's called Resin Lover or something like that. It's just like somebody who took the product and kind of tailored it. For artists, what is, uh, what is the C? What's that? You said A, B, and C. What is the C? Oh no, no, no! I'm sorry. No, no, it's only like A, oh, okay. A and B. Um, uh, it's called for art lovers, and 
it's just directed towards artists. It's nothing different. Uh, you can get them on Amazon, uh, but you know, it is this right here was a hundred hundred bucks shipping. Um, well, you know, it depends. But you can find you know a deal here and there. But you know, to do this much, you're gonna you're gonna have uh, it's gonna be around hundred bucks. All right, so I, again, I taped it. I have a cardboard underneath that one. I have something so it drips underneath. Um, if you feel on some of these, uh, you can feel like the edges weren't, uh, they were just, you know, dripped out. It's because I didn't care. Um, once you uh, ultimately get done with it, you can sand it down. The great thing about this actually is you could take a sander to it. Sand it all down, re-pour it like it never happened. And that's what's... That's what I like about it. So I use a lot of paper. So if my paper sticks up, I can sand it down and, and it starts, um, like this one right here, you'll feel the edges. You can feel how rough the edges are and you can see how like it's sticking up somewhere. So I can literally go over with like a, um, a 60, mm -hmm. boom, hit it. And then once it reports, like the, it'll go right back into the, the sand grooves. Mm -hmm. And so usually if I like mess up on the sides, I'll sand it down. Uh, once I do another report, I'll use it for you. I'll use it as a, a side thing. Okay, I'm having a hard time with this glove. I'll get so over it. you send it to get it back to shininess. Because and then it comes back like looking mess, brand right? new. Yeah. And then That's all you have to do is, it's just like a, a, a countertop. You wipe it down with a, 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 a white rag. At least that's it. It's amazing. Uh, sticks, sticks you need uh, so that way you get to whip it. You got to whip it for like five to ten minutes. Um, so we'll start. And it doesn't matter which one. If you start with A, if you start with B. One to one. One to one. You need the chemistry. And um, at the end, of the, you should have a mask. Oh, so you're. <laughs> I was about to ask if you need like some PPE for this. You don't have to. Um, so another thing is the environment, right? So sometimes what has happened is um, I have a bad pour and I'm like, what happened? I either had it in here or I had it in there. Here there's more air and air conditioning. Over there's a little warmer. So it tends to like do some weird stuff to me. You're like, man, what happened? I mean, because it is temperamental. Um, yeah, and then like, because I finish, I've done woodworking before, and I know like if there's really high humidity mm -hmm. with certain finishes like polyurethane, um, you it'll actually turn cloudy if the humidity is high. So here in the Florida, I'm definitely not doing. Yeah, like yeah. in Florida. <laughs> right. Do we need to open any windows or anything? No. Okay. I mean, it's not going to get that bad. It's not, gonna, it's not like it's going to. I'm not doing that much. If if your son was in here. Oh. Um, you do. What do you make him feel bad? Yeah. I have to think about that. Um, you always want to make sure you're in an environment where there's not like a lot of lint or whatever. Some people put boxes over them, but if you're doing big, big pours, you know, don't turn off the fan and make sure to leave it alone. The process does take anywhere from 24 plus hours. At about nine hours, you'll, it'll have a coat on it, but it'll still be, uh, if you touch it, it will bang it and will uh, mess it up. It starts getting real, real, real hot. And then that's all you do is you just continue to just mix it. You want to mix it thoroughly. You just, uh, some people use a blender, uh, but whatever you use, it's shot. It's done. It's over with. You're not going to be able to. Some people will use their, um, uh, their same um, measuring cup. After all, but it's like, well, it's not getting a true, like, uh, accurate. 
and then it turns a little milky, and then you see the bubbles start flying, right? That's where you should have a mask because of the, those bubbles get in your lungs. Yeah. Yeah. But then if you die, you also become a better artist. Like, <laughs> if you die, more expensive. Yeah, it is. But it's not necessarily better, though. Um, and you just want to make sure everything's like prep, ready to go. Because uh, like now, it's game on. I encourage to do this type of a propane, because if you do the one with the, the, the clicker, it's, it's just too much trouble to think about. You just click and go. And you, can get, you can get those at home. You can get that at Home Depot. Um, 20 bucks, 25 bucks, 30 bucks. It is an investment, but I mean, you'll end up getting it back. Uh, another one, if you do it on wood, wood breathes, wood's alive. So if you don't seal it with like a polyurethane spray, um, you can have, or you'll see bubbles coming out of the wood because it's breathing. Uh, it's just, and I learned that um, big time because I, I liked the wood look. And I was sell, uh, sealing it, and then I was just having all these bubbles like throughout the process. Man, what's going on? This thing? And it looks like something's underneath the ocean, and you see this like ramp, like bubbling, just like, and that's exactly what it does. You see why people use uh, blenders. And if you use the blender because this is faster, it's not heating faster? No, it's just you're mixing, it, you're, you're, you're mixing it and you're taking, you know. Okay, cool. You, you won't have big arms. Like, if you need to work out, though. <laughs> it's pretty crazy you have to mix it that long. No, you don't. I mean, because it's like all, and you have to like go around the edges and so forth. So you start to feeling it's warming up? Yeah, you can feel it. And basically, <laughs> do you have to worry about bubbles in it or anything at this point? Right now, no. And you just kind of just let it do its thing. Um, you guys can come closer if you want to see it. Oh, absolutely. Because I think it's more cool. And some people use spatulas to do, to do it. The, I mean, the cheaper the, uh, you can use plastic knives, forks, like that type of stuff. Because I mean, after it, like I said, everything else is going to be done. So you just want to make sure everything you use is very just throw away. And wipe down your painting, because once it gets in there, it's in there. And like sometimes I'll have to take a, uh, like tweezers and stuff like that. Um, and see, this one won't even take a lot because I'm just going to end up just letting it all like, just ride out. It's just like a, ma a magnifying glass. Like it literally will take colors and just really, you know, brighten them up. Wow. So you can see how it's, like, it's just, it continues, it's just going to keep bubbling. Um, um, obviously, <laughs> make sure it's safe, when you start yeah, having your best in the product, in the moment, safe distance. And all you do is just. In, you can, you'll see the heat just kills the bubbles. Oh, 
If you get too close to saying one thing, it starts burning. Um, then you want to be careful with your uh, your tape, obviously. The other thing with wood, you know, the splinters, all that, it, it starts popping up. And it's just, you, once you start doing it, you start to understand um, how it is. But on a basic level, um, <laughs> but that's it on a basic level, but you'll have to come back in about 10 minutes. Go now with the flame again because it's just going to keep bubbling. And then you start checking like where mistakes are. Like if it's sealed, you can start seeing where it's leaking. Mm -hmm. So you because it'll start pushing if it's heavy some way. So you want to uh, watch out for that. Um, if anything starts flying in, if you see something, because what it will do is it will pick up things that you didn't even see. Mm -hmm. Because maybe you did something after you uh, did a polyurethane or fix it on it. Um, and so it'll take that, that charcoal or paint and pop it out and you're like, ugh. Uh, so you always want to make sure you're satisfied or you feel like you're ready for that challenge. Because, you know, ultimately some things will happen that you didn't foresee. Sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing. Uh, so um, if you're working with something and it's, it is a big commission and so forth, they might at the same time do a side piece as a tester. Sometimes I do things as a tester just to make sure to see if I'm doing everything right before I end up going you know, back into it. Um, the reason why I say uh, leveling and your uh, environment is, uh, is needed to be, it's not too cold, not too hot. So it looks like a silicone uh, brush, no, not, I mean, but it literally went to one side, but it leveled here. So something was wrong with my uh, with with my one and one. It may be a little more, or something, or the environment. So then it made this. But I can literally now just sand it down. Um, and, but you have to be careful to make sure it's level, and then you go back into it and you can repour it. And so that's why I haven't done anything to the bottom. Uh, typically, you could take the same you could take the same stick. Uh, and then throughout the process just keep scraping or have like a scraper and just keep scraping. I mean it will take, a, it takes a little time. Um, I would say this process, the bigger the piece you get, it is going to take a little more as just involvement with it. Uh, but I usually, when I have acrylic, I usually do it before I go to bed. So that way I wake up and it's like Christmas all the time. So, uh, but you know, you want to make sure that you're just peace. If this is something that you're going to push out or if it's a test, like some, sometimes I just do these as I call them uh, like fillers. So if I'm doing a show or whatever, so I like the back's not like clean or whatever, they're just fillers because I got lazy I couldn't produce like 20 pieces. Um, but all this will come off with a sander. You know, I just got lazy because I probably, I think when I did this, I did like seven of them and I just got like fed up. I'm like, I'm going to bed. But that's where you just take a sander, boom, this will all just get sanded down, and then uh, it looks pretty good, and you just can, you know, put your name, stuff, sticker, all that in the back. Are you keep them on the seat of any other... The business guy. <laughs> Oh, I guess. Capable to see that any other way, or just if you send it down and you pour a third yeah, you can brand new layer. Right? Yeah, you can't save it any other way because if you're not satisfied, like even this one, it has a little bit. So, like, you know, if you have a, a standard level, like you feel as an artist, you definitely want to keep that standard going. So, like, sometimes I'm just like, yeah, this is a test or so, but when I do like jellyfish for real, I'm understanding what's going on. Even though to the average Joe, they're gonna be like, yo, I love it. But then, you know, as you get bigger and better as an artist, you're gonna start having a standard to where, just like a hairstyle, it's just like you do commissions, like, you know, what they expect from you. Yeah. Um, always keep track by. We didn't really say it at the beginning, but Mark Anthony has pieces like at the Tampa Port and you're working on something. 
Um, yeah, so um, I have done uh, shows myself. I curated my own shows for a while. Uh, and so that's why I kind of like wanted to get a group of guys and, and a group of people to start because it, it starts becoming real demanding to do shows. Um, starts on a large scale. Uh, I've done probably eight self-produced everything for, uh, that I've done. Uh, I do have uh, a three-piece, uh, six and a half feet high, 12 feet, uh, 12, 12 feet long, three pieces in the Port of Tampa. Uh, it's going to be on a year now that I've done that. Uh, I've done uh, pieces for office buildings, uh, children's cancer center. Uh, it keeps going on. Like, you know, you start losing like where everything starts going for them. Uh, so you know, ultimately, I'm originally from Los Angeles, but Tampa has uh, actually taken you know everything and, and made me a better person. And better, you know, uh, this is my time. Somebody said, told me the other day. Uh, so, uh, I believe this is my home, and so I just wanted to make sure that, you know, anybody around me, the community side of it, uh, on the art side, uh, starts getting the well recognized that it, recognized, recognized, I can't even talk right here, uh, that it deserves. So, in the spotlight that it deserves. Uh, but you can start, like, looking at it. You can see where it'd be satisfied. Um, right here, there's, like, a corner that didn't get anything. How long do you have to work with that? Uh, depends on the environment, depends on the size, and depends on um, how you mixed it. Like it's just you gotta keep watching it. And I usually will do this. Mm. It's still pretty liquidy, right? Because it's gonna go back to it. It's gonna, you know, you're not really hurting it right now. Um, so you can tell if it's very fluid. And you always want to catch the light, because then you can see where the bubbles are or problems are. Um, like this one right here has a heavy side on this. So I know like doing woodwork, I would actually bring like a shop light down. Like I'd have the work piece here, and I'd bring the shop light down so the whole light so comes done. completely across so you can see everything and like pick out all the dust and stuff. How long would you have before you like didn't want to use what you have mixed up anymore? You know what I mean? Like once you poured those two, and um, I, I mean, I went overboard right now. Uh -huh. I mean, right now you can still, I can still, okay. I can probably find another piece of it, which I'll now that. Um, but it is setting, okay. so. If like if you want to, you could like if you want to pour some more stuff. I was going to put some questions out there. Yeah, go ahead. Right. So looking for feedback. What do y'all think of what we're trying to do here? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's a really great idea. Okay. This is something that you think would be good for the art community? Oh, yeah. yeah. Any particular questions for this process? How would, you, <laughs> how would you want to set the sides? Like on your big splatter piece, like if you wanted to have those sides really smooth like that as well. So once you tape it, right? Mm -hmm. So it's puddling right now. Mm -hmm. So in about, it about, it starts becoming like molasses. And like really heavy glue and that sap that you would see like live sap that um, and then you just let it go over the side and it starts becoming like taffy okay. right like taffy it just starts bending okay. and then you take this and you just scrape the side okay, okay. and you just keep you just keep any whatever's excess like that's spilled uh -huh. and you just keep adding like you use that and I usually use like a card or somewhere you can whatever you start understanding how you work as a, with your tools then you just start, you know, going on your size. So this right here, probably another hour, okay. then it starts really becoming like that taffy to where once you take that tape off, it just starts slowly going okay. over the side. Cool. And it like starts adjusting itself and it'll stretch out. Um, and so that's why when you pull um, puddle or puddle it like that, uh, Uh, you're trying to get that depth, like you know, some of them, and sometimes I, sometimes I do it because the paper, I have paper, and I maybe didn't seal the paper, like this one right here, I could feel I didn't put the paper down all the time, all the way. And then I would have, I'm going to have to do surgery, I call it surgery, I'm going to have to cut it in there, figure out how to like flatten it out. So I'll puddle it, 
But once it's public, you have no idea that that problem existed. So you put enough to cover it up? Yeah, you always want to always overdo it, uh, your mix. And that's what I'm saying, if you have extra pieces. And then another thing after that, you can still do an acrylic pour with paint. So mm -hmm. you, some of these, like after this, if you have like plastic cups, and say you you're, you do a lot of abstracts, mm -hmm. so you choose your color. Mm -hmm. um, you could put those in there. You want to do ninety percent resin to your uh, to your paint. Okay. So a little drop of paint. You can kind of you see it there, but you want to mix the resin first, mm -hmm. then pour it in the cups, then add your, you know or add your paint and then pour that in there so it's in there. Okay. Because if you try to one for one. In those little plastic cups, you're not going to get the same. Okay. So is this like the same sort of epoxy that's put on like bar tops and exactly the same? Okay. Right. Well, this all makes sense. <laughs> How many times will you go over with the torch? Uh, two to three, but I keep oh. watching. Mm -hmm. If it's still active, you just keep doing it until you feel that there's no other uh, bubbles. Okay. But usually, uh, more than it's it's about three times. But again, again, if it's uncured wood or something like that, it's breathing, you're going to have to... Right. And at the end of the day, you're just going to get so frustrated because it's just going to keep breathing, and it's like, I'm going to have to sand it down and come back. Mm -hmm. So you think after like a couple hours, you don't have to worry about it bubbling? Yeah, you're, you're just long? done. Yeah, okay. and it'll, it'll stop its process. So if it dries with a bubble, then um, you sand it and be... Yeah, you can, like you said, you can, you can sand it, come back, um, again, that comes to your standard. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go to a show, I always, when I go to a show and I see somebody resin, so I'm always trying to gauge myself. So I'll look at it. You could tell somebody's an artist when they are like in your painting so close, it's mm -hmm. like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> um, that you know they're trying to figure out the process or somehow, some way, because they're, they, they have a, a similar situation. So this one I'll probably end up having to sand down. chips and leaves that like uh, the oil on the wax it uh, tends to have that look to it okay. so because it got behind it right. and like it made that look sure you have enough for your propane tank because like there's nothing worse than having a full-fledged huge resin and you're like ah, I get, and then it just goes out mm -hmm. and now you're trying to figure out how to pop those bubbles mm And if you, like again, if you do keep it too much on one spot, it'll start creating a skin, like this little, little skin, and it'll start burning, and you'll leave a burn mark. And um, there's no permit, and then you have to sand it, and then it becomes like a problem, and you're just like, now you have all this work. And I mean, when you do a big pour, if you're doing a big pour, it's a problem, because now you're just now wasting probably a $40 pour. Now you gotta order some stuff and do another pour. So you always just wanna make sure that um, you watch that. You're going to just send this down? You know you're going to send this down, this one? No, I don't know what I, no, I won't do it no. now. I mean, you can't do it now. Not right now. Uh, like this one right here, like it has the way. So 
uh, I like I was gonna do it the other day, but I said I need this for the tutorial. But you just sand it down, and then I I'll leave it for another big day to pour because that's 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 a forty dollar pour. Mm -hmm. Just like your time, and that's what I'm saying. Like if if you know how to calculate your time as an artist, like this has to go into it as well. Mm -hmm. You know the material that you know because. The amount that one for one that you're about to use is going in the time is at least forty bucks, mm -hmm. at least this right here. I mean, I would even say these are like you know, and that's why when you do a pour, you just mass produce and then you're done for a while, Let, you know, to get your stuff out. So that's why I'm doing all these like little small pieces now. So I have these because uh, I do large format. So now all my like I have that little you know sketchbook type stuff. And it's on wood, so it's not like I can roll it up. I don't do it on canvas. Uh, but yeah, canvas is like a lot different than, like I said, wood. Um, you always want to make sure you have that hard backing to it. Um, oh yeah, that's actually off of the uh, that cold wax. That one, that whole right. one is off of the cold wax, okay. except for the splattering on mm -hmm. it. But that's why I use the cold wax. Um, but yeah, and then you just you know just let it be, and then you'll come back, you know, have have some tea, dinner, or whatever. Um, but be prepared. You're outside in the garage. Mm -hmm. Something may fly into it, so have some tweezers. Go in there, and you. And again, this is where you will want to have the mask because you're going to be so into it, trying to like find the bubble or find the issue, mm -hmm. uh, and, and get it resolved at that point. And because once you start getting into that hour and a half, you do this and it'll make that curl just like it is on the back right here. And it'll stick and you'll be like, Ugh. and then you go, oh, should I heat it up to try to like say you can try to recover it? It won't. Now it just becomes like something you're burning and it'll get a carbon, that, that carbon look to it. That's what I was going to ask you to heat back up. <laughs> I mean, there, it, to a certain point, but it's gonna do its own thing. And then you're all ultimately now, as it's hardening, now it's just gonna take that carbon hit and that fire a lot worse than you, when you do it now. Mm -hmm. And so then it's just like, okay, then you messed up. And you're just like, oh, I just wasted a half hour, hour of my day. I know with woodworking a lot of times, it's better just to let it dry with the defect in there and then just lightly sand it and then bring it up to like 2,000 right. grit to bring it. Because if you try to pick it out, it's just going to right. tear the film apart. And just make sure you look at it, because there's just times I wake up and the rest of the morning there's like a gnat in there, or even a, uh, and then if you have hair, pull it back, mm -hmm. or you know, wear a beanie or something like that that keeps your hair in there. Um, I mean, I've gotten too close, my chains got in there, and it's just like, oh my God, so you know. Um, if you do get it on you, go to the sink, you know, use soap, water, right then and there to dilute it, and, and there you go, that's the basic of it. And then, like I said, if you started wanting to get any colors, you can even go colors now. Like, you did the basic, and you maybe, you know, do some colors, and then you can do some colors, but, you know, add that resin with it. Um, you can do it after as well. Um, I've seen people do layers where they'll do the initial layer with the background resin mm -hmm. and then come back, do something on top of it. Um, what's his name? Uh, used to be a tattoo artist, uh, clothing line Hardy. Uh, I forget his name. But he would do resin and then he would take a, a tattoo gun, go in there and it would carve it and then you would uh, put paint in there after that. So it, it has a lot of, uh, you know, things you can do to it and, and, and secrets and tips. Um, but, you know, on the basic level of this, I always tell people, if you have a so-so pain, it takes it from 2 to 10. Um, you know, it, but it does bring it out. I mean, the gold and the flowers look a lot. Like this this painting right now, I, like I kept it there. I was like, yeah, there's something else I need to do. But now with the resin and the gold, it's like, okay, cool. And now I got a paint. So, well, thanks for coming out.